Hi everybody, Sven Latinovich here again. And today I have the pleasure of speaking to Professor William Pappenheimer. Uh, professor Pappenheimer is a professor of art at Pace University. He's also an artist himself, a working artist who had his project shown at museums such as the Whitney. He had his projects shown all over the world in countries like England or Switzerland. And yeah, he's here to talk to you today to share some valuable advice and I'll let him introduce himself further. Hello, hello. Um, Sven, nice to talk to you. Um, Will Pappenheimer, uh, Professor Pappenheimer. Um, I like to use my first name too, but anyway. Um, uh, yes, I am an artist that has been using this uh, digital media to make my art for almost, uh, tw I guess it's almost 25 years now. So it would be the mid-1990s when uh, many, both the internet was exploding, it was before YouTube, imagine that, uh, before Twitter, um, uh, when YouTube came along, I was tremendously happy. Um, but I've used this technology in all kinds of ways. Um, first, uh, making works that were um, half on the internet, if you will. In other words, they were governed by um, both information as well as user input. And then they would have a digital um, a, or, or a physical side to it in that they would drive different things in an in an installation that would change color, change sound, and so on, so they could be driven by the web. So that it was, in, in a sense, what we call mixed reality. It's uh, you know, something that is both virtual on the web and something that is, is real in itself. And that has stayed with me, that idea of the mixed, uh, uh, of a mixed reality. So um, when the, um, around 2008, and 2010, um, a new technology, augmented reality, uh, started to emerge um, in, in and become available to the population, okay, as well as the public. And uh, this, the, the phones could handle it. Um, Qualcomm was involved in it in originally, and there was a company out of uh, Amsterdam called Layer, which produced a, an augmented, augmented reality program that was mainly GPS based. So you could put a project in a certain location. And I, of course, got very involved in it and very interested in it because it was this kind of mixture of both the real and the virtual and so on. It was the confluence where they, those two meet. Um, and one of the first things I got involved in was a, a, uh, a kind of intervention into MoMA, um, Museum of Modern Art in New York that friends of mine put together where we staged our own exhibition, uh, you know, um, without um, and he, they invited many artists to make things for, and then they put it together in, in, as an augmented reality project on different levels so that you could go to different levels of the museum. And then we could put our artworks in the museum without asking permission and so on. And I thought this was just fascinating um, opening up, if you will, of, of the museum to, uh, uh, through dis digital technology. Just the same way the internet, in some senses, social media has opened up everybody to, in a sense, have a platform, okay? No longer do you have to go to ABC to start publishing something. You can uh, uh, essentially do it yourself. So this was a way of sort of breaking the physical boundaries. And from then on, I've done uh, uh, many projects over the world where um, I'm often doing installations that have a relationship to the location. And so I will make a three-dimensional object in a uh, three-dimensional program, a modeling program, and then I will put it online. And then when you go to that location and you, if you have a cell phone and you launch the app, you are suddenly confronted with the superimposition of that three-dimensional object or sculpture or space. And uh, um, you can walk around it and through it and so on. Uh, so you perceive it as a virtual sculpture, if you want to think about it that way. Now, um, since then, obviously, 
uh, AR has become much more developed and has entered the main, mainstream. And you, uh, you know, I'm, when I speak to you, I'm speaking to uh, the potential audience here, probably know it best um, either as Pokemon Go, where you uh, can go around a, uh, essentially the entire world and you can see the Pokemon Go figures um, and collect them and so on. That is a good example of, of AR as a, as a sort of ubiquitous game. And as soon as that came in, which is, I've forgotten when that first started, maybe, you know, 2015 or something like that. Um, for the first time, I saw people walking, all kinds of people walking around the streets, holding their phones up and looking at different things, something I had been doing for five or six years and everybody thought I, we were crazy. Um, so uh, um, it was a very successful game. Um, the second thing that you probably are very familiar with is, of course, Snapchat and Snapchat filters. And those are also augmented reality or mixed reality. And the way they work is that when you hold the phone up to your face, basically what the phone does is to recognize your face and build a very simple structure that mimics your face and then track that. OK, so that when you turn sideways in different directions, um, it's tracking your face and how that changes shape. Once you do that, you can put any object on top of it. OK, and it'll follow you. And in fact, if you, it, you know, with more recent phones, you can track even the mouth, uh, the mouth movements and so on so that you can speak and the object that you have will speak. So there's two examples of how AR now has become very much part of what you experience on a day-to-day -day level. And it will probably be more than that as time goes on. Um, um, I am still, as an artist, very interested in using this as an artistic uh, uh, medium. So my ideas for it are not so practical um, they're much more involved in the, the kind of ideas and juxtapositions that you can create by putting a, a shape into a, a existing space and then being able to interact with it in various ways. Um, uh, a short example of that would be a recent drawing program, and I know there's lots of them now out there in AR, but this would have been a few years ago where um, uh, you are able to draw on your iPad and contribute to a group drawing that is floating in the middle of the room. So each person that logs in can draw on their phone and then it goes as part of it. Um, I also made a skywriting uh, application so that you could leave skywriting over um, prominent buildings, including at one point uh, many buildings in Washington, D.C. So you could comment put your uh, graffiti over the White House um, and view it through your phone. Is that a good introduction here? <laughs> More than an introduction. You gave me <laughs> answers to all of my questions right away in one go. Uh, Sorry. No, that's, that's wonderful. It's a, uh, yeah, I think in your stories, you, you talked about both yourself and your art and how technology has impacted it. Yeah, And I think you, I'm very happy that you mentioned Pokemon Go and that you mentioned Snapchat and all these filters. I think that's something that we can all, we, we all use it on a daily basis, right? And it's so important and ingrained in everybody's lives. And it's just such a brief glimpse into all the important developments that have happened in technology and how, yeah, it has impacted us on a daily basis. So um, is there a piece of advice that you could give to the students within like two or three sentences or something like that, maybe about the importance of technology? And sure. Um, I think what I think we talked about this too a little bit is that um, it's really important to realize that technology now is such an integrated uh, part of our lives. In, and there's really no area that you're going to encounter either in your education or post-education that is not going to involve technology of some sort. And it's really both wonderful to understand how things are made because it allows you, in a sense, to take a little bit of control and creativity 
over what you are producing, okay? It allows you to be the maker, okay? And that's what a lot of social media is anyway. But understanding that is, is really terrific. Not only that, it's fun. <laughs> it's just plain fun. If you are able to make a whole painting, drawing, collage, whatever in Photoshop, it's just, it's tremendously satisfying. And that is what the whole kind of culture is doing anyway, let alone make an experience that we can all go into in VR. So super integrated into our lives and knowing more about that is both fun and I think extremely important uh, so that we know what we're dealing with when we uh, face all these black and uh, boxes and so on and games and uh, 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 desktops and so on. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much for your time. Students, hope you enjoy this. Good luck with the rest of the week. And yeah, I think that's it. Thank you Great. very much. I'll send you, I'll send you a couple of links that people can go to if they um, would like to see more. Perfect, please do. All right, all, all right. right, take care. Cheerio, fam, bye.